All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Valsa Williams and with me is Sunil Verma. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact online with fitness influencers and citizens at the Fit India Dialogue today. Government raises limit for use of SDRF funds by states from 35% to 50% to tackle COVID situation. Minister of State for Railways Suresh Angri dies of COVID-19. President, Vice President and Prime Minister condole his demise. G4 countries call for decisive push for UN Security Council reforms. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Kolkata Knight Riders by 49 runs at Abu Dhabi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with fitness influencers and citizens during a nationwide online Fit India dialogue today. The dialogue is being organized to celebrate the first anniversary of the Fit India movement. The online interaction will see participants sharing anecdotes and tips of their own fitness journey while drawing out guidance from the Prime Minister on his thoughts about fitness and good health. Among those who will participate range from Virat Kohli to Milan Soman to Rujusa Divekar, in addition to other fitness influencers. Speaking on the occasion of Fit India launch last year, Mr. Modi had said that fitness has always been a part of our life and our ancestors also gave great importance to it. Fitness is not a word, but it is a necessary part of our life and health. Fitness हमारे जीवन का सहज हिस्सा रही है और हमारे यहाँ तो हमारे पूर्वजों ने हमारे शास्त्रों ने बार बार कहा है व्यायामात लबते स्वास्थ्यम दीर्घायुषम बलम सुखम आरोग्यम परमम भाग्यम स्वास्थ्यम सर्वार्थ साधनम यानी व्यायाम से ही स्वास्थ्य लंबी आयु शक्ति और सुख की प्राप्ति होती है निरोगी होना परम भाग्य है और स्वास्थ्य से अन्य सभी कार्य सिद्ध होते हैं Envisioned by the Prime Minister as a people's movement, the Fit India Dialogue is yet another endeavour to involve citizens of the country to draw out a plan to make India a fit nation. More from our correspondent. In times of COVID-19, fitness has become an even more important aspect of life. This dialogue will see a timely and fruitful conversation on nutrition, wellness and various other aspects of fitness. In the past one year, since its launch, various events organized under the aegis of the Fit India movement have seen enthusiastic participation of people from all walks of life and from across the country. The Fit India Freedom Run, Plog Run, Cyclothon, Fit India Week, Fit India School Certificate and various other programs have seen a combined organic participation of over 3 crore 50 lakh people, making it a true people's movement. With Dipendra Kumar, Suparna Saikya, AIR News, Delhi. All India Radio Delhi in coordination with the News Services Division will broadcast this program live. It can be heard on FM Gold, Indraprest and AIR Live News 24-7 YouTube channels from 12 noon. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has announced that the limit of using the State Disaster Response Fund for COVID-specific infrastructure has been increased from 35 to 50 percent. He said the decision will help states have more finances at their disposal to fight the virus. Interacting with chief ministers of six states and one union territory through video conference, Mr. Modi said there is a need to further strengthen health infrastructure to tackle COVID. These states and UTs are Andhra Pradesh, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi. He reviewed the status and preparedness of a COVID response and management more than 63% of the active cases of the country are concentrated in these six states and a union territory. The Prime Minister also stressed on the need to improve the network of tracking and tracing and ensure better training. He said the country needs to not only keep fighting the virus but also move ahead boldly on the economic front. Mr. Modi stressed on the need to increase focus on effective testing, tracing, treatment, surveillance and clear messaging. The Prime Minister underlined the importance of ensuring smooth movement of goods and services between states.
एक राज्य से दूसरे राज्य के बीच दवाइयां आसानी से पहुंचे ये हमें सबने मिलकर के ही देखना होगा संयम संवेदना संवाद और सहयोग की जो प्रतिबद्धता इस कोरोना काल में देश ने दिखाई है उसको हमें और आगे जारी रखना है संक्रमण के विरुद्ध लड़ाई के साथ साथ अब आर्थिक मोर्चे पर भी हमें पूरी ताकत से आगे बढ़ना है The chief ministers appreciated the leadership of the prime minister during this crisis period. They gave feedback to the prime minister about the situation on the ground, talked about the challenges being faced by their state in controlling the spread of the virus and the preparation done till now to meet the expanding challenges by ramping up the health infrastructure. The government today said that the new recoveries of COVID patients in India have exceeded the new cases for five consecutive days. In a tweet, health ministry said This has been made possible by focused, responsive and effective measures of early identification through high and aggressive testing, prompt surveillance and tracking combined with high quality medical care. India's COVID-19 cases crossed 56 lakh tally with 83,347 infections being reported in a day while over 45 lakh people have recovered from the disease so far. The coronavirus case load surged to 56 lakh 46,010, while the death toll climbed to 90,020, with 1,085 people succumbing to the disease in a span of 24 hours. The total recovery surged to 45,87,613 in the country so far. The recovery rate improves to 81.25%. The COVID-19 case fatality rate due to the coronavirus virus infection has dropped to 1.59%. There are 968,377 active cases of the infection in the country which comprises 17.15% of the total case load. According to the ICMR, a cumulative total of 6 crores 62 lakh 79,462 samples have been tested up to 22nd of September with 9 lakh 53,683 samples being tested yesterday. A total of 3714 new confirmed cases of coronavirus have been reported in Delhi during the last 24 hours taking the total number of cases to over 256000 Delhi government has said that over 220000 people affected with coronavirus have been cured so far in the last 24 hours 4465 people recovered and 36 deaths were reported in the national capital taking the toll to 5087 Presently the total number of active corona cases in the national capital is over 30000 The Chhattisgarh government has warned of tough action against private hospitals levying exorbitant rates for treatment of covid patients The health department has issued a circular asking private hospitals to strictly comply with its directives regarding cost of treatment More from our correspondent There have been many complaints in Chhattisgarh that some private hospitals are charging arbitrary fees for treatment of corona patients despite state government capping the cost. Now, the state government has warned that permissions given to private hospitals for treatment of covid patients could be revoked if it received any complaint regarding exorbitant treatment cost. A directive issued by the Director Health Services states that action will be taken under the Pandemic Act against against those hospitals who are charging over and above the rates fixed by the state government the state health department has also directed to ensure the availability of oxygen facilities in 50% beds of those private hospitals which have been permitted to treat corona infected patients vikalp shukla aiir news raipur gujarat has reported a record 1372 new cases of covid-19 during the past 24 hours the total cases in the state have gone up to 127541 more from our correspondent With a recovery of 1,289 patients yesterday, the recovery rate has further improved and reached up to 84.44 percent. Total 1 lakh 7,701 patients have been recovered till now. More than 39 lakh 86,000 tests have been carried out till date. Maximum 294 new cases reported from Surat. At present, total active cases in the state are 16,470, out of which 86 patients are on ventilator. 15 patients died yesterday. Meanwhile, Surat Municipal Corporation has suspended. 
the license of one private lab for issuing bogus report to the COVID-19 patients. Yogesh Pandya, Air News, Ahmedabad. Maharashtra Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre has expressed confidence that the recently launched campaign of My Family, My Responsibility by his government would strengthen the fight against COVID-19 in the state. In a video conference meeting with Prime Minister Narendra Modi yesterday, Thakre said case fatality and COVID-19 positivity rates are also expected to come down due to the mass health campaign aimed to curb the coronavirus spread. Details from our correspondent. The My Family, My Responsibility campaign launched on September 15 is aimed at effective healthcare education for control of the pandemic. It has been conducted in two phases, spread over September and October, with target to reach out to 2.25 crore households. The Chief Minister said 59,000 health teams have been set up to carry out the campaign and 26% of the households have so far been covered. The campaign envisages conducting health check to identify symptoms followed by proper treatment of patients. Thakre told the PM his government is in the process of setting up tele-ICU system in rural areas of Maharashtra and also post-COVID care centers. He said that the government has decided to avail guidance from expert doctors from urban areas. Devupre Bhattacharji, AIR News, Mumbai. In Odisha, the COVID-19 cumulative recovery has gone up to 1,57,265. On the other hand, the state reported an all-day high of 15 deaths yesterday taking the toll to 736. A report. Amidst the Delhi discovery of more than 4,000 positive cases, the Delhi recovery too has been trending upward with as many as 4,052 patients getting cured on a single day yesterday. Even in the capital, Bhubaneswar, the grey area in the past against the virus, 392 patients recovered yesterday as against 301 positive cases. On the flip side, the total caseload of the state has further jumped to 1,92,548 with Khordha, home to capital Bhubaneswar, leading the day-wise inter-district COVID-19 tally with a high of 736 cases as on yesterday. Girish Chandra Das, Bhuvaneshwar. Total active COVID cases have reached 94,652 in Karnataka after 6,997 new cases were detected yesterday. At the same time, 5,460 persons were discharged after recovery. New COVID deaths reported yesterday were 38. The state conducted 56,398 COVID tests. Bengaluru Urban District reported 3,547 new cases and 23 deaths yesterday. Meanwhile, Medical Education Minister Dr. K. Sudhakar refuted Congress leaders' charges of corruption in the procurement of equipment for COVID-19. Speaking in the Legislative Assembly session yesterday, the minister said prices of PPE kits and other essentials were high initially due to high demand from the, for them. During the later days, he added, prices came down due to an increase in domestic production. Dr. Sudhakar also said that there is considerable ramping up of medical infrastructure in government hospitals in a short span of four to five months. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Edupadi Palani Swami has asked the centre to provide additional financial packages to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. During his interaction with Prime Minister Narendra Modi through video conferencing, he said, the state fares very well in several parameters in controlling the viral disease. More from our correspondent. The Chief Minister has demanded the emergency response and health systems preparedness package to be stepped up to 3,000 crore rupees. He has requested an order grant of 1,000 crore rupees from the National Disaster Relief Fund. He has also pressed for releasing the pending custom milled rice subsidy of 1,321 crore rupees to facilitate paddy procurement. Mr. Parini Swami has put the demand to the center to share 50% of the cost of COVID-19 tests saying every day about 6.8 crore rupees is being spent as about 85,000 tests are being carried a day nowadays using the RT-PCR kits. Jay Singh, AR News, Chennai. In a discussion with AIR, Dr. Sanjeev Sharma, Director of National Ayurvedic Institute, Jaipur, spoke about the consumption of Ayurvedic kadha to improve immunity to avoid the infection of COVID-19. He urged people to take ingredients according to the requirement of bodies. 
काढ़ा है जो भारत सरकार के आयुष मंत्रालय ने एक आयुष ड्रिंक के नाम से बताया गया है और भी बहुत सारे क्वात हैं जो अलग अलग हमारे क्लासिक जो है हमारे चर्क या सुशु संहिता या दूसरी संहिता ग्रंथ जो उनमें बताए गए हैं वो काढ़े भी बहुत बेनिफिशियल है जैसे गोजीवादी क्वात एक बहुत अच्छा काढ़ा है जिसका हम लगातार प्रयोग कर सकते हैं तो ये जो है नियत मात्रा में और अपने बॉडी के अनुसार लें और परेशानी है तो चिकित्सक का परामर्श जुड़ लें Health Minister Dr Harshvardhan has said that India has accorded high priority for ending tuberculosis by 2025 five years ahead of the sustainable development goals Dr Harshvardhan said this while addressing ministers of member nations of WHO heads and representatives of UN agencies through virtual interaction yesterday He spoke on India's role and contribution towards strengthening multi-sectoral action and progress towards ending TB especially in the context of the COVID-19 crisis. You are listening to the morning news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact online with fitness influencers and citizens at the Fit India Dialogue today. Government raises limit for use of SDRF funds by state from 35% to 50% to tackle covid situation minister of state for railways suresh angari dies of covid-19 president vice president and the prime minister condoled his demise g4 countries call for decisive push for un security council reform and in ipl cricket mumbai indians beat kolkata knight riders by 49 runs at abu dhabi for quick news updates round the clock Follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has hailed the passage of labor reform bills by Parliament. In a series of tweets, Mr. Modi said long due and much awaited labor reforms have been passed by Parliament. He said the reforms will ensure well-being of the industrious workers and give a boost to economic growth. They are also shining examples of minimum government maximum governance. The Prime Minister said the new Labour Code universalises minimum wages and timely payment of wages and gives priority to occupational safety of the workers. The reforms will contribute to a better working environment, accelerate the pace of economic growth and ensure ease of doing business. Mr Modi said these are futuristic legislations to empower enterprises by reducing compliance red tapeism and inspector raj The reforms also seek to harness the power of technology for the betterment of the workers and industry President Ram Nath Govind will confer the National Service Scheme NSS awards for the year 2018-19 from Rashtrapati Bhavan today through virtual mode The NSS award for the year 2018-19 will be given to 42 awardees in three different categories like university, NSS units and their program officers and NSS volunteers. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Kiran Rijiju will attend the ceremony from Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. All India Radio Delhi in coordination with News Services Division will broadcast live the award presentation this morning. It can be heard on FM Gold in the trust and air live news 247 youtube channels from 10:30 am department of youth affairs confers the national service scheme award every year to recognize and reward outstanding contributions towards voluntary community service at present nss has about 40 lakh volunteers on its rolls spread over the country minister of state for railways suresh angadi who had tested positive for coronavirus passed away at aims new delhi The national flag will be flown at half mast today in all government offices in Delhi due to the demise of Angadi. Suresh Angadi represented it Belgaum Lok Sabha constituency four times. The president, the vice president and the prime minister have expressed grief over his demise. In a tweet, President Ramnath Govind said, "An amiable leader, Suresh Angadi worked tirelessly for the people of his constituency Belgaum and Karnataka." Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu said that he is deeply shocked by the sudden demise of Suresh Angadi. Condoling his death, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, "Suresh Angadi was an exceptional karyakarta who worked hard to make the party strong in Karnataka." Mr Modi said, "He was a dedicated MP and effective minister, admired across the spectrum." Home Minister Amit Shah and other senior BJP leaders have expressed grief over the passing away of Suresh Angadi. Former Prime Minister H D Devi Gowda also condoled Angadi's demise. 
In our series on Seva Saptah, today we bring you a special story on infrastructure development in the country. In the last six years, Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led NDA government has taken several initiatives for infrastructure development in the field of railway, civil aviation and road transport and highways. Launching the infrastructure project in Bihar on the 21st of this month, Mr. Modi had said today multimodal connectivity is being emphasized in the country. Connectivity is a kind of thing that is a kind of thinking in a way that is a kind of thinking. One of the people who have made a road here, one of the people who have made a road here, one of the people who have made a railroad here, one of the people who have made a railway station here. This kind of approach has been a lot of damage in the country. First, the highways, the roads, the highways, रेल नेटवर्क से कोई वास्ता नहीं रहता था रेल का पोर्ट से और पोर्ट का एयरपोर्ट से कभी नाता नहीं रहता था 21वीं सदी का भारत 21वीं सदी का बिहार अब इन सारी पुरानी कमियों को पीछे छोड़कर आगे बढ़ रहा है आज देश में मल्टी मॉडल कनेक्टिविटी पर बल दिया जा रहा है अब हाईवे इस तरह बन रहे हैं कि वो रेल रूट को एयर रूट को सपोर्ट करें Our correspondent reports that 102 lakh crore rupees infrastructure projects will be implemented in the next five years as part of the government's spending push in the infrastructure sector. In the field of railways, the government has planned for 100% electrification of its broad gauge routes by 2023. Around 63% broad gauge lines have already been electrified as on 1st of April this year. In civil aviation sector, 756 air routes have been sanctioned so far under the Regional Connectivity Scheme Udan. Government has approved 78 new routes under the 4th round of Udan scheme to further enhance the connectivity to remote and regional areas of the country. Road Transport and Highways Ministry has proposed to develop additional 60,000 kilometers of national highways in the next 5 years under the pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana 1 lakh 25000 kilometers of roads will be constructed to strengthen rural roads and connect them to schools hospitals and agricultural markets with dipen anand kumar air news delhi in madhya pradesh poor and needy families are being provided free food grains under the pradhan mantri garib kalyan ann yojana in khandwa district lakhs of people are getting benefit of this on a large scale our correspondent has filed this report Khandwa District Food and Supplies Officer R K Shukla said that Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Ann Yojana ke antargat hamare jille ke lagbhag 49000 parivar hain jinhe prati maah jo April ke aadhar ki avadhi mein 7 kilo gehu aur 1 kilo chawal kul 10 kilo prati sadasya evam prati parivar 1 kilo dal ke maan se inko abhi tak vitrit kiya ja raha hai Under the Atmanirbhar Bharat Yojana 700 families are getting free food grains the beneficiaries are also very happy with this scheme मेरा नाम चंपालाल यादव है प्रधानमंत्री मोदी जी ने जो ये कदम उठाया गरीबों के लिए अनाज का निशुल्क बहुत अच्छा मतलब इससे फायदा हुआ हर गरीब को मतलब खाने की समस्या नहीं गई। देर वेर 14,868 फैमिलीज इन खंडवा हु डिड नॉट हैव राशन कार्ड एज वेल एज मोर देन 10,000 फैमिलीज डिड नॉट हैव इलिजिबिलिटी स्लिप बट दे आर ऑल्सो बींग प्रोवाइडेड फ्री फूड ग्रेन्स अंडर दिस स्कीम विथ हीरा लाल लोंगरे फ्रॉम खंडवा संजीव शर्मा ए न्यूज भोपाल Narcotics Control Bureau NCB has summoned actors Deepika Padukone, Shraddha Kapoor, Sarah Ali Khan and Rakul Preet Singh for questioning in an alleged Bollywood drugs nexus. NCB's Deputy Director of Operations KPS Malhotra said that Deepika Padukone has been summoned tomorrow while Shraddha Kapoor and Sarah Ali Khan will record their statements on the next day. Rakul Preet will have to appear before the agency today. The development comes days after Padugon's manager Karishma Prakash was summoned to join the investigation but she has been exempted from appearance until Friday. Prakash's WhatsApp chats included conversations about drugs with 1D and the agency is keen to find the person's identity. MCB is currently probing a drugs angle that came to light in connection with actor Sushant Singh Rajput's alleged suicide case. Foreign ministers of the G4 countries India, Brazil, Japan and Germany have highlighted the urgency of reforming the United Nations and updating its main decision making bodies in order to better reflect contemporary realities. They expressed disappointment at attempts to derail this process and committed to addressing the issue in a meaningful way and with increased urgency at this 75th anniversary of the UN. External Affairs Minister Dr S J Shankar and his counterparts from Brazil, Japan and Germany met virtually during the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly yesterday. 
In a joint press statement, the G4 minister said, only reforms in UN Security Council can save it from becoming obsolete. Broader membership of the Security Council will allow it to preserve its credibility and create the political backing needed for the peaceful resolution of today's international crises. In Myanmar, community-based organizations have blamed the Chinese gas and oil pipeline project of environmental destruction and human rights violation in the execution of the Shui gas project and Trans-Burma pipeline. The Yakai-based, uh, community-based organization Shui Gas Movement told a newspaper that people in Yakai are losing their livelihood and suffering serious human rights abuses due to these projects. The work on the Chinese oil and natural gas pipeline in Myanmar started in 2009. In IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians defeated Kolkata Knight Riders by 49 runs at the Sheikh Zayed Stadium in Abu Dhabi. Mumbai Indians, powered by a Rohit Sharma 80 and a quickfire knock of 47 by Surya Kumar Yadav, set a 196-run target. Rohit Sharma plummeled the, the Kolkata Knight Rider bowlers into submission for a 54-ball 80 and powered Mumbai Indians to an imposing 195-45. Earlier, Kolkata won the toss and chose to bowl. In today's encounter, Kings Eleven Punjab will take on Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai. The United Nations in Britain will co-host a global climate summit on December the 12th, the fifth anniversary of the landmark Paris Agreement. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres and the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson will co-host the event to rally for much greater climate action and ambition. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature was 24 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 37 degrees. The city is likely to have a mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, minimum temperature was around 10 degrees, maximum will be 30. The city will have a mainly clear sky. Ladakh will have a mainly clear sky too. The temperature is likely to hover between 8 and 27 degrees. In Gilgit, the temperature is likely to hover between 10 and 34 degrees. It will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. In Muzaffarabad, there will be mainly clear sky. Temperature is likely to hover between 15 and 36 degrees. In Dehradun, the temperature will hover between 22 and 31 degrees Celsius. The city will witness a partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In Chandigarh, there will be partly cloudy sky. Minimum temperature was 25 degrees. Maximum will be around 36. National capital Delhi is expected to have a partly cloudy sky. In Hyderabad, minimum temperature was 23 degrees. Maximum will be around 32. City will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Minimum temperature recorded in Ahmedabad was 28 degrees. Maximum will be around 35. The city is expected to have rain or thunder showers towards evening or night. Guwahati will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. Minimum temperature in the city was 25 degrees, while the maximum will be around 31 degrees. And now, an overview of today's newspapers. Productive but divisive monsoon session ends is the top headline in the Hindustan Times. Rethink short lockdowns, tracing is key, PM to states, is the lead in the Indian Express. PM wants focus on micro-containment zones to curb COVID, rides the Asian age. CAG slams French companies for not fulfilling Rafale offset terms, highlights the Times of India. Saudi Arabia bans flights to and from India as COVID cases rise is a front page story in the Pioneer. Under the caption Bon Appetit, the Financial Express notes, India is eating more at home with small town India leading the recovery in food delivery. And finally, a Kolkata street car for book lovers. The Hindu takes a look at a book laden air conditioned tram built like a library set to roll down College Street and recreate the ambience of the city's academic corner. Thank you, Sunil. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to interact online with fitness influencers and citizens at the Fit India Dialogue today. Government raises limit for use of STRF funds by states from 35% to 50% to tackle COVID situation. Minister of State for Railways, Suresh Angli, dies of COVID-19, President, Vice President and Prime Minister condole his demise. G4 countries call for decisive push for UN Security Council reforms. And in IPL cricket, Mumbai Indians beat Kolkata Knight Riders 
by 49 runs at Abu Dhabi. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on AIR app. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.